Welcome to the Ameridroid Minilab slash electrical closet. Today we will be assembling the Ameridroid tablet kit. Step number one, take things out of the bag. As you see, you have a front panel, a back panel, four sides, these are printed in gray. You can get the front and back panels in any color you want, pretty much, and the side panels in any color you want as well. And then your bag of hardware. So we'll just dump that out. As you see here, we have two uh, zender handles. These are for pulling the zender units out of the side as they're very hard to do otherwise. And an assortment of hardware and an M3 hex wrench. So you should have already uh, purchased an Odroid V7 or V7 Plus tablet, uh, tablet kit like this one. Uh, not tablet kit, but uh, screen. And then uh, also you should have a single board computer. In this case, it's an Odroid C2 for this demonstration, but the uh, same procedure works for most other ones. And you should have your uh, Zender units. There should be two of them. All right, so the first step. These are the four mounting holes that will hold the single board computer. So first we take one of these short M3 screws or bolts and stick them through the uh, hole here. Now we'll take the M3 12 millimeter. They're the only ones that have a male on one end and a female on the other. And we'll screw the female side in. So as you can see here, we've got the bolt and that's threaded in. Now we're going to do the same thing for the other three holes. The next step is to take your single board computer. You'll want to make sure your media is already installed because it is difficult to uh, change these out without taking the case apart because this will be right back up against the screen once it's installed. Okay, and as you can see, it should be lined up with two of the Ethernet or the Ethernet port showing and two of the USB ports showing. All right. So now we're going to take the shorter posts, the short female to female posts, and mount them on here. There should be three of them. All right, and the last one here, we're just going to put an M3 nut on it. All right, so that's the first step. The next step is to repeat that for the rest of these posts here. Uh, notice in the top plate that some of the bottom plate screws don't go through because they're for holding in other components like the UPS3. So in this case, we're just gonna find the ones that line up with the top plate and uh, hook those in with the longer 20 millimeter posts. If you're also installing a UPS3, it would go right here, and you wouldn't use this post, you'd use a different post in that place. If you're using the UPS2, it goes right here in these four holes. And if you are installing the X Proto Lab, it goes in here with these two posts. All right, so that's what it should look like after you get the uh, longer posts mounted. The next step is to put the display on top. Now you'll notice that there are the switch and these two ports. They should line up with the two ports on the single board computer. And then you have your four side panels. The long one goes on the top with uh, this hole 
towards the left side, that's for the UPS2, if you have it installed. Uh, the short one, go here. This is a slightly older side panel. It doesn't have the uh, on-off switch and the power for the UPS3, but the one that you get should. And uh, then we have uh, this switch is for the UPS2 as well. That's the side panel. And then this one is for the right side. Now you could put a piece of tape around here and around here also around here to hold these in place while you get the top on. I'm going to attempt it without. If you get in the right spot it should just click down because there are tracks in the top case. Well I'm going to just start with these two uh, screws here. You will need a Phillips screwdriver for these particular screws that we're including right now. We may switch to an M3 hex head in the future. Okay, now that I've got this side screwed in, I'm going to I'm going to um, insert this panel here on this end. So it should just snap into place like that. And if you have it in the right spot, you should be able to see fully the the um, HDMI ports and the micro USB ports. Uh, so what I'm going to do at this moment is take a zender. Now you want the top, this part to be facing up, the opening to be facing up, so like that. And as you can see, this should go in this way. Just slide it into there. Now we have a nice little handle by which to hold it as we're inserting it. For the HDMI, uh, we did the same thing. You have the backlight switch is still available and the power on the C2 is available through one of those holes right there. So if you're not running it off of battery, that's where you plug in your power. And as you can see, there's a lot of room in that tablet for other stuff to go. Uh, lights, speakers, USB ports, all kinds of good stuff. All right, so now we will connect the rest of the screws. All right, there you have it. The Ameridroid tablet kit. Now when you are removing, let's say you want to hook this up to a big screen TV, just wiggle that back and forth until it comes out and I can hook up a regular HDMI cable to your C2 or whatever single board computer you have in there. And then when you want the screen to work again, just put the Zender unit back in. And the same with the micro USB for power, if for whatever reason you want to pull that out. All right. Now when you look at the back, you'll see you have access to the 40 pin GPIO connection. You have access to the UPS3. If you mount it here, there will be uh, a female header, a 40 pin header here. The X Protolab oscilloscope will have uh, its pins available in these holes, in these slots. And um, if you hook up the UPS3, you'll need to run jumper wires from the, uh, I believe it's four pins that are used for the UPS3 from here to here, but those can route through the inside of the case. That's it for today.